with first updates now here at Ramp Riot in Pennsylvania. We're here with Team 316 Lunatics to tell you more about their robot. Their robot zooms across the field, equipped with its elevator and arm. And we'll show you a little bit more about each of its systems and its functions. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Fun is continuing to grow and looking for new ad partners for the 2024 season. If your organization has a positive message to spread to our over 250,000 unique viewers, go to firstupdatesnow.com slash contact to get more information. Tell us a little bit more about our drive base. Yeah, so um, we actually just switched our drive base over the off season. Uh, during the season, we had tank drive and um, Recently in the off season, we switched the swerve drive. So we're using two inverted Mark IV uh, modules on the front and then two Mark IVs on the back. And the reason we picked that was because that's what we could fit in our robot to keep our mechanisms the same. We also have three of our four uh, uh, drivetrain rails are complete steel and that helps keep our center of gravity low. All right, so I'm gonna move over to the uh, elevator here. So our elevator is a uh, cascading style, uh, multi-stage elevator. So it's connected through these ropes and the chains. And what makes it cascading is it all moves up at the same time. It's all powered by this uh, Falcon 500 right here. And uh, in our last segment here, we have our telescoping arm. And Maria will tell you a little bit about that. So here we have our telescoping arm. It connects to both the elevator and the wrist. So our elevator helps to move the entire telescoping arm up and down. And the arm itself runs on a pulley system to bring it in and out so that we can have the wrist reach where we need to place the game pieces. And Trevor can tell you a bit more about the wrist. So we have our uh, wrist system here. So we have our own gearbox down here that we built with its own special uh, gear ratio and it connects via chain to our intake. So our intake here consists of this bar right here and these two rollers, which are all powered by a 775 motor. So when we want to pick up a cube, it will uh, interface between this metal bar here and these set of rollers. And when we want to pick up a cone, it'll interface between these rollers here, these gray ones, and these white ones. So what's interesting is this metal bar enables us to flip up the rim of the cone, which puts it right into our uh, intake system and makes it very easy to pick up cones that are flipped over on the field. So was this your first iteration of your intake, or did you go through multiple to kind of get here? Uh, we definitely went through a whole ton of different things. We had a whole prototyping section. A big question was whether we wanted passive or active intakes, and we just thought that the active intake was a very uh, efficient system and enables quick cycle times. Uh, so this is sort of the design that we picked. And this, there was a whole bunch of other iterations of active and intakes and stuff like that. So, but this is definitely a very robust, very nice design. Uh, so I'm going to hand it over to Nikhil to talk a little bit more about the, the programming. Yeah, absolutely. So our, uh, our uh, elevator and scoring system is all controlled by four buttons. The first button, as you can see here, resets it to its starting configuration, how it starts during the match. Uh, when we enable the robot, our second uh, button right here uh, raises the elevator to mid. This allows us to score on all mid levels, cones and cubes. It raises the elevator, doesn't touch the arm, and then puts the uh, wrist out for a scoring position. Our next button is gonna be our high button. This raises the elevator a bit more, extends the arm to reach the node, and uh, puts our wrist in scoring position for a cone or a cube. Our last set point uh, with this red button right here goes to our station height. Our preferred station is a double substation, so we can pick up cones from this area and then reset it all with the green button. Uh, yeah. On the driver controller, uh, we have our driver control the intake, so it's controlled by three buttons. Our first button is the cone set point. This allows us to pick cones up uh, from the ground. The next is the cube set point, which is for cubes off the ground, and then back up for reset. So tell me more about your autonomous modes. What do you do in Auton, and how did you decide what to do? 
All right. So in the beginning of the season, we prioritize getting a balance. So we always place one cone up and then balance. And the off season, when we started with Swerve, we were like, we could do more with this. So we decided to go for a three-piece Alton using Path Planner. So we, as you can see on the field, we were able to achieve that, and that's our primary auto running this off season. Okay, so I do have to ask, what about the forks on your robot? How did you make the decision to go for that, and what was the process behind that like? So the forks are something we developed in between our first and second event. Um, we were uh, we picked it because we, um, as a tank drive, we wanted to be able to enable more possibilities. So by having these forks, we can have three bots on the charging station without actually having three bots on the charging station. So if we want to do a demo here, we move the robot out a little bit. Um, we use the servo here to drop the uh, forks. Servo. So we do a little shimmy drops the forks, and then from there, we can winch ourselves up uh, on our partner, and that's how we can do the triple balance. Beautiful. Well, thank you, 316 Lunatex. Congratulations on a season well played, and good luck in the 2024 season. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you, and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.